Assalamu alaikum. A question was addressed to me. Did the Prophet take his hand out of the grave? So a man called Ahmad al Rifai was kissing it? This is a mere lie. You know why? Was the Prophet extending his hand like this when he was alive? So people kiss his hand? Was he doing this? You know, if you claim, if someone claimed that the Prophet was digging the dust in his grave mm, deliberately so his hand will be extended up in order to let people kiss it. You think this is a, this is a praising to the Prophet? What would the Kuffar be saying? Even in his death, he extended his hand to let people kiss his hand. That wasn't the character of the Prophet when he was alive. How dare you make such claim that the Prophet extends his hand to let people kiss it. That wasn't the Prophet when he was alive. So stop making the lie. This is one of the allegations of the Sufis, okay, especially the Rifai. And I have a book that was written against them. And I mentioned this myth, this lie, this fabrication. And I refuted it for something like 10 pages, proving that it's a lie. That was something like 30 years. I went to Egypt and I dedicated myself one whole month in the general Egyptian library, Darul Kutub. I stayed there for about one month collecting all the Sufi Rifai manuscripts, and I read them all. And I made my book about the Rifais. And Alhamdulillah, none of them had proved me wrong. Or they claimed that I made a lie. No, 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 no. Alhamdulillah. Now, what I remember that the story begins like, Ahmad Rifai saw the Prophet in the, in the dream. And the Prophet said to him, come and visit me in Medina. You know, Ahmad Rifai was, he was in the fifth century after the Prophet's death. So there was something like five centuries between the Prophet and this man, Ahmad Rifai. Now, it's uh, worthy to notify that the Prophet والسلام, who is in Medina and Ahmad Rifai was in Iraq, the Prophet prohibited to make any preparation for travel to anything other than the three masjids. He said, لا تشد الرحال إلا إلى ثلاثة إلا إلى ثلاثة المسجد الحرام المسجد الأقصى مسجدي هذا He said والسلام, no preparation for travel should be taking place except for three. The Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca, the Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, wa Masjid Hada, my Masjid. Okay, he didn't say my grave. The other point is, Aisha herself lived in her house and the grave of the Prophet was inside her house. And uh, we don't have any narration that she said, I heard the Prophet from his grave saying so-and-so. Never, never, never. No communication. No communication. But Aisha is the most beloved person to the Prophet wasallam, The most. Narrated by Muslim. Who is the most beloved one to you, O Rasulullah? He said, Aisha. They said, no, we meant by men, among men. He said, her father. Mm -hmm. Did the Prophet say to Abu Bakr, come and visit my grave? No. Did he raise his hand from the grave so Aisha will be kissing his hand? No. Why? They don't care about him as the Sufis care about him. The Sufis love him too much, and he loves the Sufis too much. But uh, 
Aisha doesn't love him the way the Sufis love him. That's why she did not say, for example, O oh Prophet, can you extend your hand from the grave so I can kiss it? No. Either the Prophet loves Ahmad al-Rifai more than Aisha and Abu Bakr and the companions, or there's something wrong, there's a lie. <laughs> now, when they told us the, this story in, in their book, they said, the one who denies this story, hmm, he is a great uh, dal, misguided. But even there's a fear that he will be, it will be ended up with him by being non-Muslim. Intimidation. Never, never, never let it come to your mind. That there's something wrong with innovation, it may be a lie. Never. Otherwise, you're gonna be you're gonna be non-Muslim. Mm. You're gonna lose faith. This is intimidation. This is a support for the lie in order to, you know, horrify the person who may say, wait a minute, let me think. No, don't think. Otherwise, you're gonna lose faith. <laughs> That's a fact. Now, who made that lie? The one who made that lie is a person whose name is Muhammad Abu al-Huda Sayyadi. He lived at the last period time of Uthmani era. And Sultan at that time, he loved him. Why? He came to him and he said, I must tell the Sultan what I saw in my dream. And the Sultan was so compassionate in these things. It's very emotional. So, and, you know, they like the Arab, Arabian leaders, Arabian um, spiritual people. I mean, the Turks. So the Sultan welcomed him. And he told him that the Prophet, والسلام, came to him in the dream. And he was praising the Sultan. The Sultan was crying for this. That was a lie. So this man became the closest person in the Sultani uh, Palace. He became a very influential person to the extent that we have uh, Al Alusi. Al Alusi was really criticizing the Sultan for allowing such liar to influence him. And the weakness, the weakest of this, of the uh, Uthmani government at that time became the weakest because of this man, Abu al-Huda Sayyadi. And another one, a Sufi Sheikh, his name is al -Shadili. And guess what? The Sultan himself was kissing their hands. And they became leaders, decision makers. This is the one that made the lie. So in what century? The beginning of the 20th century. Long time. Look. Let's say that uh, this story of uh, uh, extending uh, the Prophet's hand, it happened on the 5th century, okay? But we have a lot of Sufi books who talked about Ahmad al-Rifai and his karama, his miracles. They never mentioned this story. Despite its importance and 90,000 people witnessed it, no one talked about it. And those Sufis were so keen to collect any miracle to support this Rifa'i Tariqat, yet they never mentioned anything about it, like Ibn al-Mulaqqin, the Sufi, in his book, Tabaqat al-Sufiya, the biography of the Sufis, he never mentioned anything about it, except this man who fabricated it, I mean Abu al-Huda Sayyadi. The other lie is that the, uh, they claimed that uh, Ahmad al-Rifai did it while the whole masjid was filled with 90,000 witnesses who witnessed this case. Wow. Before the extension of the masjid. Let's say the masjid at that time can consist 10,000. At that time, for example, it won't be able to consist to contain such number. And they say that the 
90,000 people witnessed this. 90,000. Well, it won't be easy. I mean, they have to take a long queue that may reach outside, out of the Medina. People are standing in queue. Okay? Yalla, come. Um, um, see? Look, 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 the hand of the Prophet is with me, huh? I'm catching uh, his hand. You see? Yalla, go. You come. Next. So it may take something like, like one week for 90,000 people to keep watching this, and the Prophet's hand remained for all of that period of time, okay, to enable 90,000 people to watch this incident. Oh, come on. Oh, please. This is a lie. So all books that talked about Ahmad al rifaa and his miracles never mentioned this. This is not the only lie they make. Look at this, look at this exaggeration. They say here in this book, Al-Burhan Al-Mu'ayyad, written by Ahmed Rifai, page 92, that Allah authorizes the awliya, the allies, to do anything they will in the universe, to the extent that they have the word kun, be. Whenever they say to the thing be, it becomes, those are gods? They're making the awliya saints equal with Allah in doing whatever they want to create. And this is not the only fabrication they did. They have a lot of fabrication just such as Rifa'i used to be, whenever he mentioned Allah, he dissolved. He become like butter. You know the butter? When you heat it, it becomes oil. His body used to be the same. When he remember Allah, that's why they had to, when he worship Allah, he, they had to put him in a container. I mean, look at these lies. So those who made these lies can make such lie that, you know, the hand of the Prophet went up and the Rifa'i was kissing it. These are fables. Look at this. I documented it. Rifa'i dissolves just like dissolved butter. What do you say about that? This is stupid. Look at that. The book says that he dissolves until he becomes a water splash. And uh, they say that his, his daughter entered his room and she saw this water splash. She was playing with it. That's why he had a problem with his eye after he, you know, he returned as he was. So because his daughter was playing with the water, his eye... One of his eyes become malfunctioning. What is this? This is stupid. And they have another stupid story that he used to be selling real estate in paradise. <laughs> Isn't this similar to Christianity? When the Pope used to be selling, giving uh, checks, selling parts in paradise. Look at this now. A woman came to Rifai. And she said to him, I'm pregnant. What do you think I have in my belly? He said, uh, you have a boy. Then after she delivered, she came back to him and said, you promised me that I have a boy in my belly? Look, I have, I have a female. He said, I swear by God, I did not say to you that you are pregnant with a boy until I touched his scrotum with my hands. Oh my God! <laughs> so not the only hand of the Prophet was lied against, but also they make a lie against the hands of Rifai that, that he extended his hand inside the belly of the woman and he was playing with the scrotum of her child. Look at this! Silly, absurd kind of narrations. And you want to believe them? The name of the book is Jala al Qulub, page 220. Not only this, but they claim that Rifai said there is no sperm that enters the private part, the uterus of a woman, but the Sufi awliya, they know when it entered and what would it be, male or female. They know everything. And they also say that Ahmed Rifai used to be sleeping in the oven. People are baking the bread while he is inside the fire, enjoying the good weather, 
sleeping inside the oven and nothing happened to him. Now you may ask yourself, why am I relating all of these narrations from those uh, Rifai Sufi? It's just to show you that this is not the only lie they make. They make horrible lies to the extent even that they say that uh, if you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, may Allah's peace be on the Messenger of Allah, and you point your finger just like that towards Medina, you'll be in fact touching his chest in his grave. <laughs> Look, everything I document, I do not tell lies. I have spent a part of my life tracking those people intellectually without uh, exaggerating. So what is the difference between us and Christians now? When this man, Rifai, sells, make checks for selling lands and palaces in paradise. Please, O oh Muslims who say La ilaha illallah, what is the difference between us and the Pope who used to be selling parts of paradise to those stupid people? We're sharing them in stupidity. They, they claimed also that, uh, that uh, a Siyuti mentioned this karama. And they referred to the Siyuti the same intimidation that whoever doesn't believe it will be having a problem in his faith. And he may die while he's not Muslim. A Siyuti doesn't speak like that. He's a person of hadith. This is a book that was fabricated. This man is fabricator, Abu Huda Sayyadi. And he fabricated... Um, a book um, under the name of uh, a Siyuti. Now he came after Siyuti. There's something like three centuries between a Siyuti and this man. And uh, this man took a part of his book, of his claim, and he referred it to Siyuti. So how come that this, that Siyuti is taking the same statement from the one who came after him three, three centuries after? That's a lie. The other thing is that the Prophet ﷺ does not allow holifying the grave to the extent that it may become fitna on people. Imam Shafi'i, also he said the same thing. وَأَكْرَهُ أَنْ يُعَظَّمَ مَخْلُوقٍ That's in his book, Al-Um. بِحَيْثُ يُجْعَلُ قَبْرُهُ مَسْجِدًا مَخَافَةَ الْفِتْنَةِ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَى النَّاسِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ and I hate that a person will be magnified to the extent that his grave will be taken as a place of worship, masjid. Feeling fitna, tribulation, trial against him and about the people after him. So a Shafi had fear. And those people, they try their best to make a relevance a tie between the dead and the living one in any way, no matter what, by no means. So how can the Prophet contradict what he say? He said, you should not be traveling to visit grave. You should not be traveling to visit anything such ceremonial, ritual kind of travel other than three masjids. He did not say, the fourth one is visiting my grave. So there's a contradiction here between what he said, which is authentic in Sahih Muslim, and then suddenly he says to Ahmed Rifai, ah, there's another lie. The other lie is that uh, the Prophet himself, he ordered the Kaaba, the Kaaba, you know, the Kaaba. He ordered the Kaaba to come. That's after his death to come and to accompany him in visiting the village of Ahmad al-Rifai in Iraq. So the Prophet visited Ahmad al-Rifai in Iraq. Wow, where, where is, how, do we, how do we believe this? That's a lie. We not only encountering a lie of extending the head only. But we are in a greater trouble now that uh, the Prophet himself goes out of the grave to visit Ahmad al-Rifai in Iraq 
at the 6th century. And he takes the cab with him, come with me. Can you imagine this? This lie was made in two books, Qiladat al-Jawahir, page number 15, and Daw al-Shams, page 175, for this liar, al-Sayyadi al-Rifai. His name is Muhammad. He called himself Abu al-Huda, the father of guidance, al-Sayyadi. He is Sufi. And he, he has a book, his, the, the title of the book is Barqamatul Balabil. Barqamatul Balabil. Barqamatul Balabil. The conversation of nightingale. What is that? He claimed that two birds, they were, you know, on the tree and he was sitting down. And as he was sitting down and the, the birds were talking to one another, saying, saying to one another, do you know that this man is wali to Allah? He is an ally to Allah. And he was... The whole book is about discussion between two birds about the, <laughs> the holiness, the sacredness of this man. That's a lie. This man is a liar. Don't tell me that he was given the power of Suleiman, the prophet, to be able to speak to the ants and the birds. There are many historian people, Sufi historian people, like Subki in his book, Tabaqat al-Shafi'iyya. Al-Munawi, uh, Ibn Al-Mulaqqin, Al-Sha'arani. They used to be writing all the happenings historically. And those significant people, what happened to them. And those are Sufis. Yet they never mentioned anything like that. Even Al-Sha'arani, who was maybe a hundred years before Sayyadi, never mentioned the story. How come no one knew about it? Suddenly, in the 19th, between the 19th and the 20th century, this man brought this lie. And they claim that uh, Ahmad Rifai was making poetry when he stood at the grave of the Prophet. Saying to the Prophet, O oh Prophet, um, extend your hand because my lips want to touch it. <laughs> Silly emotional things that no one would believe it except some maybe layman people. That's a lie. They even claimed that the Prophet replied to this poetry by a poetry from him that was sounded from his grave. He's saying, What? The Prophet speaks poetry? Aisha narrated that the Prophet used to be hating poetry. And now they say that the Prophet was speaking poetry in his grave. You know, there are many lies like this. The Sufis are, make, are uh, racing to fabricate lies like this. Each one would be uh, attracting people to follow his tariqah, his way. Like Shadili tariqah, Rifai tariqah, Naqshabandi tariqah, etc, etc. You know, like for example, the, the Shadilis. They say that uh, uh, Abu Hassan al-Shadili, the establisher of the Shadili tariqat, um, he sought permission to enter, to, to, to the grave of the Prophet and speak to him. Then he heard the voice from the grave saying to him, O oh Ali, come, ta. Does the Prophet speak like that? Ali, udkhul, come in. And the Shadilis claim that uh, the Shadili student of this man, Abu al Hassan al Shadili, he said, If the Prophet was absent, from my eye, just like a twinkle of an eye, I will not be considering myself one of the Muslims. That means the, ne the Prophet never been absent to him in his whole life. Well, like, welcome to be companion, Sahabi. So this man becomes Sahabi. Can you imagine that those people, uh, I don't know in which planet they're living, they're making lies over lies. These are lies. 
Who claimed that lie? One Egyptian uh, man, he used to be a mufti in Egypt. His name is Abdul Halim Mahmoud, typical Sufi. He mentioned that lie in his book, Abu al-Hasan al-Shadri, page 79. The Qadri Sufi people as well, yeah, they, they joined these kinds of lies by saying that Abdul Qadir Jilani, you know, this, the, the Qadri people, they call him and they claim that he is the He is the one that has the full power to manage the whole universe. Wallahi, look what they say. Ya Abdul Qadir, ya Jilani, ya Mutasarrif fil Akwani. Mutasarrif fil Akwani, that means you have the full authority to do anything you want to do. You have the full pow power to, to do anything in the universe. <laughs> and they say, we're making Allah similar to his creatures. You are the one that make Allah similar to his creatures by giving these divine qualities to human beings who died and they owe nothing for themselves. So the Qadiris say that Abdul Qadir Jilani came to the grave of the Prophet, he stood up at the grave of the Prophet and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Abduka bi babik. Oh Rasulullah, your servant is at your door. Kalbuka bi a'tabik. Your dog is at the step of your door. One looking, one observing from your eye to me will be sufficing me, O Rasulullah. Then suddenly the Prophet spoke to him and said to him, Anta waladi, you are my son, wa maqbulun indi, and you have been approved by me, by this beautiful words you gave. Saja, Mubaraka, blessed Saja. Saja, it looks like poetry, but it's not. So he was speaking to the Prophet, saying to him, I'm your dog. But the Prophet used to have no dogs. In fact, firstly, he was ordering the killing of dogs. Then he said, kill the black only among them, because he's a devil. So, <laughs> imagine... He's saying that I'm your dog, but the Prophet didn't have dogs when he was alive. Amazing lies. And the Prophet, um, he liked it. Yeah. Why did they say that? Jama Karamat al Awliya. There's a, a book that is really funny. Encyclopedia of the miracles of Awliya, the allies of Allah, the saints of Allah. Um, second volume, page 100. So Jilani, Abdul Qadir Jilani was saying, O oh Prophet, your dog is at your door. MashaAllah, really? Even Sharani, the Sufi, he said, I keep speaking to the Prophet just like the way I speak to my wife, to my friends, day and night. I, I speak to him, he replied to me. We always, we're always together. Not only that, that's in uh, his book, Lata'if Minan. والأخلاق فيما من الله بي على الإطلاق That's the name of the book, page 123. That's a lie. He was speaking to the devil why he didn't realize. Let's have a look at this book. غاية الأماني في الرد على النبهاني The author is a Hanafi Iraqi scholar, well known, whose name is Mahmoud Shukri Al-Alusi. He is, I think, the son of of the big author of the Tafsir, Ruh al Ma'ani, a well known scholar, and he was at the lifetime of this man, Abu Huda Sayyad al Rifai, and he refuted him and had proven that this is a fabricated lies that this man launched at the time of the last caliph and the Uthmani uh, Caliphate. So he was blaming him. Proving that he is a liar. Why the prophet? Why the prophet take the burden to speak to those people? Why he did not speak to his wife, to Abu Bakr, to the companions? No communication between the companions and the prophet sallallahu ever. And I challenge anyone to bring me any um, 
any connection that took place between the Prophet and any one of the companions, especially Aisha. Aisha was in her house for 40 years after the Prophet's death. 40 years! And she never heard anything coming from the grave of the Prophet. She did not speak to the Prophet. Why? They don't care about him. Maybe Aisha is Wahhabi. Sahaba are Wahhabis. The Prophet loves you more than his companions. You love the Prophet more than his companions. This is, this is a lie. Anyway, now, we know that the Prophet used to be hating something called poetry. He hated it. And he said, if the stomach of one of you is filled with vomiting, it's better than being filled in poetry. So the Prophet dispraised poetry. Now, this man, Abu Huda Sayyadi, made another allegation, another lie, saying that the next year after this incident, um, Ahmad Rifai um, performed Hajj. And after finishing Hajj, he went to Medina and he was speaking poetry to the Prophet. What? He said, In qila zurtum bima rajatum, ya ashraf al rusuli ma naqulu. If we were to be asked, that means after Hajj, after we get back to our people, if, uh, if it was said to us, you have visited the Prophet, what did you come back with? Do you have anything that you came back with? What should you be answering them? Their voice came from from the grave, saying to him, in poetry, in poetry, Lie! The Prophet hate poetry. The Quran says, The accusation of the enemies of the Prophet is that he is a poet. And Allah said he is not a poet. And the Quran is not poetry. And now they, those people claim that the Prophet was speaking poetry and the, the, the poetry comes out from his grave and people heard it. Qiladat al-Jawahir, book number, uh, page number 104. Daw al-Shams, first volume, page 176. Look at those liars. And uh, in uh, Rifai book number 59, it's called Rawdatun Nadirin, and the author is Al-Watari al-Rifai. He said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was seen in the dream that he, the Prophet himself, he said to the Kaaba, come, let's go. And people, thousands of people, they saw the Prophet with the Kaaba, both. And he was asked, where are you going? He said, me and the Kaaba are going to visit Ahmad al-Rifai in, in the village called Umm Ubaidah. This is the name of the village in Iraq that uh, Ahmad al-Rifai was born there. So the Prophet himself is making a holy visit to who? To Ahmad al-Rifai. Where in it? Kaaba. Um, did they put wheels? No. So how can Kaaba move? It's not your business. Just believe it. Hmm. Just believe it, okay? Don't ask how it happened. Yeah. Okay. But I have another question. Uh, what happened to those who perform Hajj and Umrah? I mean, there are visitors for Kaaba to the, to the sacred mosque in, in Mecca. So what about uh, the Kaaba, the black box? That's not your business, okay? You just believe it. Uh, they can go around it, just like uh, <laughs> Ibn Abdeen, the Sufi Ibn Abdeen, in his book, Ad-Durr al-Mukhtar. He mentioned something like that. He said, um, matter, number, etc., etc. He said, uh, if the Kaaba decided to go and visit some of the same people, what happens? He said, the solution is that they will be making the same tawaf around it, no problem. Even if the Kaaba is not there, even if the Kaaba visited, what's the matter with, the, with those people? 
Same thing Ghazali mentioned. He said that among the allies of Allah are those whom the Kaaba itself comes and visit their graves or themselves. That's why the, the Ummah is retarding. Uh, the Sufis keep saying, well, look, one man who knows, who have knowledge of the book, he said to the Prophet uh, Sulaiman, I can bring you the throne of the Queen of Sheba before a blink, a twinkle of an eye. And that means even if you go like that, I can bring the throne to you before you close your eye. Hmm. Before you do this. See, this is karama, this is a miracle. All right, so, so the Sufis had a miracle. Bring me, please, please. I want one of those Sufi people who have knowledge of the book so I can use him to perform miracles to, to liberate Palestine from the Israelites. Hmm? That's a good job. Where, where are those Sufis who have knowledge of the book? Please, we need them. We need them. To solve the problem in Syria, to solve the problem in Yemen, to, to solve the problem in many countries that have been occupied by the Muslims. I mean, guess what? Colonialism occurred against the Muslims during the, the great influential Sufi, Sufis in the, in the society. They were claiming miracles. They can go to the throne of Allah. They can get back from there. Um, uh, they can do a lot of things, a lot of miracles, yet the Muslims were occupied and their countries were colonized by the French, by the British people, etc., etc. And until today we suffer weakness of the Ummah. Where is the role of those Sufis who have miracles? Maybe they don't deal with politics, that's why they don't interfere in these issues. So what is the value? What is the benefit? What is the outcome of your miracles? In fact, the reality and history tell us that those Sufis were allies to the French, to the British, and to the Tatarians when they occupied Iraq. Many scholars, even Ibn Taymiyyah, al Dhahabi, they were blaming those Rifa'i Sufi Tariqat because they used to be going to the Tatarians, showing them miracles, playing with the snakes, entering the, the, the ovens. Ibn Taymiyyah debated with the Rifa'is and he said to them, bring, bring a fire, okay? And clean your finger by vinegar and the hot water. And then if they're saying the truth that they can perform miracles, let them put their fingers over the fire and we'll see who has miracles. And Ibn Taymiyyah said, I challenge you, I'll be the first one to do it. Then, they ran away from this and they refused to challenge Ibn Taymiyyah with his offering miracles. And I wrote a book about that, narrating all the debate that happened between Ibn Taymiyyah and the Rifais. And you can see the picture of the book. Unfortunately, it's not published anymore. This is a lie. Those people are liars. Now, Ahmed Rifai is a Sufi guy. And sometimes he has some exaggerations. And he was expecting that his people will be making a lot of lies against him. And he was giving warning against that. But he himself, he's Sufi, just like Ghazali. And he claimed in his book, Al-Burhan Al-Mu'ayyad, that the Sufi can reach to a certain high level that he can say to the thing, be, and it becomes. We need that Sufi to say to Israel, be defeated, and Israel became defeated. Where's that Sufi? Al-Burhan al-Mu'ayyad, page 94. These, these people are liars. How come that a human being can reach to a level that he says to the thing, be, and it becomes, that means, his, that means the wali can be, can be a creator. What shall we do now? Now, when they say that, the, that Rifai spoke to the Prophet and the Prophet spoke back to him from the grave, that makes Rifai Sahabi. A he became companion. Okay? Because what is the definition of companionship? If a person 
met with the Prophet even for one second. While he, he believes in him, he becomes Sahabi companion. So the companionship did not end by the death of the Prophet. Now, we have a second generation after the generation of the Sahaba, the companions. We call them At-Tabi'oon, the followers of the companions. None of those followers of the companions had seen the Prophet. We, we, why we call them Tabi'oon? Because they saw the companions, but they did not see the Prophet. That's it. After the generation of Sahaba, there's a generation called At-Tabi'oon who saw the companions of the Prophet, yet they did not see the Prophet. So this guy is making himself, he's jumping over the level of Tabi'un, making himself Sahabi companion. Hmm. Al-Arab al 25 volumes. He mentioned the biography of Ahmad al-Rifai. He praised him. He said, he's, he's not a bad man, he's okay. But his followers are big liars. They keep making lies, inventing miracles about Ahmad al-Rifai. Al-Zahabi, Ibn Kathir, all of those people who dedicated their life to mention all happenings and biographies of leaders of faith, of imams, or, you know, no, never, they never mentioned anything about this lie. That's why in this book, al kuliyat Al-Ahmadiyya, he quotes Ahmad Rifai saying, Watch are those who make lies against us. They mentioned silly uh, miracles to him, to Ahmad Rifai, uh, such as um, a mosquito who is sucking blood from his skin. So one of his disciples saw it and he said, Kick it out, kill it. He said, No, no, God is providing her my blood. So keep her taking the provision of God. <laughs> Another miracle. Um, he was sleeping and the cat was sleeping next to him. And he didn't want to bother the cat. Then he decided to cut his sleeve. To cut. To cut his shirt. Okay? So he will not be bothering the cat. All of these silly so-called miracles they're talking they're mentioning about Ahmad Rifai but they did not mention that so-called miracle that the Prophet extended his hand for Ahmad Rifai to kiss it Mustafa Lutfi al-Manfaluti he used to be one of those special authors and writers at the lifetime of this man Sayyadi he was complaining to Allah the corruption, the evil ending of the Uthmani state because of this man, Abu Huda Sayyadi, who made that lie. He said, this man is responsible for what happened to the Uthmani uh, era because of this man. He devastated the whole Uthmani government because of him. In his book, uh, Dama Al Islam, A Tear for Islam, he was criticizing this man that he was behind the corruption and the devastation that ended up with the Uthmani state, Uthmani kingship because of this man. So he is the fabricator of the story. And the story is a mere lie. As I said, the Prophet did not <coughs> appear or speak or communicate with any among his companions. Even the second generation after the Sahaba, I mean the Tabi'een, they never had any kind of communication with the Prophet ﷺ. Don't believe it. And uh, for people who believe it, just let them, let them watch my video. And uh, if you have access, if you know someone who speaks Arabic, my book about Rafai, Tariqa, is uh, well published in, um, online. So you can download it and read the whole lies of those uh, Rifai people who fabricated this story. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.